Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name's Ed Budd, here you'll find lots of shoe and gear reviews along with lots of other running related content. It would mean a lot to me if you'd consider hitting the subscribe button down here so you can check out some of my many other videos. What an action-packed weekend of running, one I'm sure that Jonathan Richmond would have particularly enjoyed. He likes it action-packed and so do I. So fellow Yeovaltown Roadrunner Sue Mallinson and I took on the Dorchester Dash 10k. The race took place last Sunday and is a half road, half trail kind of event. I think the ratio is a bit more, probably 75% road, 25% trail really. It starts within the western area of Dorchester and works its way down through some residential streets before leading out to an old castle based location right on top of a hill. You head along some more country lanes before going up some more elevation which then sees you looping back to the sports centre start finish area. So I got up around 7.30 a.m., slightly later than I wanted to. I had yet again been rocking and rolling the night before, although this time out managed to get some half decent rest and sleep um, before the event. Porridge toast and coffee were the chosen fuels this time around, and the engine was purring along quite nicely like a mid-60s Jaguar E-Type. On leaving the house, I did take a moment to kind of check if I'd taken leave of my senses. There was rain of biblical proportions falling at this time and the sky was a slate grey. Even the Peg Turbo 2s with their alien green couldn't cut through the gloom. Lots of dangerous conditions out there, lots of standing water on the roads. I really had to pull back the speed a little bit. So I took my foot off the gas but I still arrived at the event in good time. I picked up my bib and took out the old Peg 35s to do a quick one mile warm up, around about eight minutes 30, just to get the legs moving. At this point, the rain was still falling quite considerably, and I noticed a lot of the other competitors were probably going to have donned some rainproof gear, but I just can't wear that stuff when I run. I just overheat really, really quickly. Apparently, I did get a blow to the head when I was about six years old, uh, which was caused from running directly into the corner of a sort of cupboard unit. Ever since then, rain just really doesn't bother me. I really kind of like it, in fact. My favourite conditions, a bit of wind, a bit of rain, uh, around about 10 degrees centigrade, absolutely perfect for me. So I just used the old Yeovil Town road running singlet there, the short Nike shorts, my favourites. That was the chosen attire for the day. As I say, I really hate being hot. I did consider some gloves perhaps, that's the only thing I tend to wear on my hands. I tend to try and leave my arms clear. I just seem to overheat really, really quickly. And it certainly turned out that this was the best possible choice. So the race kicked off on time around right about 10 o'clock and there were about 150 competitors. I think they probably signed up some more but I bet a lot of people were put off by that weather. It certainly took a hardy soul to take on this race. So the first two and a half miles is on some residential roads with a little bit of downhill elevation. You then turn off to what would have been the site of the Maiden Castle right up on some hills over on the sort of southwestern side of Dorchester. As you turn off you then ascend up a hill was around about 193 foot of elevation. It's certainly quite considerable. Once the race began, I started out perhaps a little bit too quick, but I managed to kind of stabilize that. Often do it, I just go out too quickly. I need to learn that. I was chatting with Matt Sparks just before. I need to learn that skill to be able to start the race just a little bit slower. But stabilized out to six minutes 52 per mile for the second mile. I think the incline and the terrain and conditions of grass, mud and a headwind meant that many runners hit a bit of a weather wall when they got up to that hill. I went into my kind of keep moving pace when I hit that hill. I knew it was going to be hard. I've done the race before. So dropped it back to round about 8 minutes 30 per mile. I just wanted to make it up there. I knew once I got to the top things were going to get a little easier. Still it's tough going to reach up to the pinnacle of the hill. You then kind of go across the top of the hill where the castle would have been and then drop down about 180 foot um, through a pretty muddy field. Didn't seem as bad this time around. I don't know why. There have been way more rain than there had been last year when I undertook the course but it didn't seem anywhere near as bad on that muddy field. You work your way through some country lanes after that and then there's another hill climb of around about 150 foot. I fared much better on that second hill. I think I was, I dropped to about eight minutes, 15 per mile. I just kept on moving. There was a chap there from the Dorchester Running Club. I kind of kept up with him, kept going, and I could see that he was really feeling it towards the end. So I just moved just ahead of him towards the end of the hill. You then drop back down the other side of the hill and return to the original roads, which brought you up to the castle. So I put my foot down then 
and really move forward. Didn't want to lose any more places there. Hit it about six minutes, 54 per mile for the last mile. Form felt good, pace was good. I was very, very kind of pleased with the end section of the race. Certainly recent training efforts um, over the past sort of 10 weeks, you know, training for that half marathon really had helped. I really did feel good and I felt strong towards the end of the race. So I came in at 45 minutes, 34 seconds, Big, big improvement on when I last did the race. Considering the muddy and windy conditions and of course that elevation, I was very, very happy with my time. Brilliant running from my fellow club member, Sue Mallinson. Saw her take her age category prize. Well done, Sue. Good to see a club member getting an award, especially in that howling wind and rain. Great determination and drive. I haven't really dabbled too much in kind of heart rate monitoring and stuff within my running. Um, I recently upgraded to a couple of the Strava perks that enable you to kind of view your pace and your heart rate in a slightly more detail. It seems to suggest I spent most of it in my kind of threshold zone, which is kind of what you'd expect. And there were a few sections there where I entered into an anaerobic kind of heart rate. Um, I'm not really sure about that. It didn't feel too tough, I guess, maybe on some of those hill climbs, maybe coming back off the hills, that was where that occurred. But everything else seemed to be relatively reasonable, really. I didn't ever feel like I was out of control of my breathing, anything like that. I always felt like I was in control. In terms of pace, I think it was about 40% in my tempo kind of pace, and then another 31% in my threshold pace. So quite happy with that. I'm kind of adjusting and moving more into those two paces and between them within my runs. Certainly within my races, actually, not within my runs. So good race and good medal. Well done to all of those who took part. Certainly took a hardy soul to go and take on that one today. So went with the Pegasus Turbo 2s for this race. A lot of deliberation, really. I want to say thanks to all the viewers who commented on a previous video trying to help me out pick which shoe I should wear. Um, it's a bit of an odd race, really, where you've got 7.5 kilometers on that road and pavement and then the rest of it on some quite muddy elevation and descents downhill. So really difficult kind of race to pick which shoe you should wear. Very difficult choice. As you can see, these have got absolutely battered now. They're covered in kind of mud and grime where they used to be that beautiful bright green color. I'm certainly gonna need some type of cleaning stuff to bring them back to life. Certainly a great shoe though, worked out really well. I think this shoe is a far more versatile shoe than people give it credit for. It worked exceptionally well on the road and pavements and I found that actually traction was half decent on the grass and on the muddy sections. There were some really boggy parts as well, but I managed to keep landing right up on the forefoot through those boggy areas and really had no problems. Just one point where I felt like I was sliding a little bit um, on one particularly wet area. But apart from that, Pegasus Turbo 2 worked out exceptionally well. As I always say with this shoe, if it's good enough for those Kenyan chaps who are running exceptional distances on those sort of dirt compacted trails, it's fine for me. <laughs> So it was, of course, the Chicago Marathon over the weekend. Well done to all the viewers and subscribers who took part. I don't know about me moaning about the cold here. It's relatively mild. It seems to have really taken a turn over in the Chicago area. It looked very, very chilly, very, very cold. There was some biting wind, apparently, towards the sort of end section of the race. So props to all of you who ran. So, of course, that women's marathon world record was smashed at the weekend in the Chicago Marathon. Bridget Kozgai from Kenya smashed that record. Really fantastic running. That record had stood for some time, of course. Paula Radcliffe was the holder up to this point. But you know, Bridget Kosgai, absolutely tremendous running. She was certainly going for it. She said she was gonna go for it, and she did it. What a fantastic day for women's running and running in general. I think she clocked in at two hours 14.04. So well inside the record there, easily by a minute. She was sporting those fantastic pink Vaporfly next percents. They really did look fantastic. Lots of people wearing those uh, those marathon events, certainly. I just really wish I could get my hands on a Flyknit pair in pink. That would look good. We shall see what comes out. Please comment below and tell me about your running weekend. What events, what conditions, what races, what training have you been up to? Let me know in the comments, please. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and also give this video the thumbs up. Please share it with any running friends you may have. My name's Ed Bud. And I'll be seeing you.